The new iOS 26.2 is finally here. This is the second big update to iOS 26 since its release and it is an amazing update. Of course it brings a ton of new features and changes, but also some really important improvements, especially when it comes to performance, speed and also battery life, which is actually quite good on iOS 26.2. Now of course with the release of these updates there are a few things that I suggest every iPhone user must do after they have updated their devices to the new iOS software release. Now before we get into all that and I'll show you guys what are these things that you must do on your device, I just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel so if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more of them, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, it really helps the channel a lot. And we're starting things off with the updates. Now a lot of users have updated to the betas of iOS 26.2 and you should know what to do next once iOS 26.2 is out to the public. So head on to the update section on the settings app And right here, if you have been on any of the betas of iOS 26.2, you need to make sure that your device is up to date and that you have installed the RC version, meaning that you have the latest release. That's the exact one as the one that has been released to the public. So you're good to go. If you're on any of the betas of iOS 26.2, then I suggest you go ahead and update to the RC. Don't leave your device on beta. Now after you have updated to the RC version, I suggest that you go ahead and turn off the dev beta right here, the dev beta updates or the public beta updates, whichever one you might be using. Now the reason I'm saying that is that it, there will most likely be very soon a first beta of iOS 26.3. Now the problem with that is that if, get, if it gets released like this week or the next week, then it's the holiday season and we won't have a second beta for at least three weeks. In that time, you might have a device with a first beta that is actually not that good and might not perform as it should, not have good battery life, or just have any glitches or anything that will actually have a bad impact on the daily usage of your iPhone. That's why I suggest once you're good to go, you're updated to iOS 26.2, make sure you have turned off the beta updates. Now, while you're right here on the settings app under the general section, make sure you go ahead and check for a carrier update as well. There are usually a lot of carriers that do push updates after a big iOS update. So what you need to do is just head on to the general settings, go to the about section, all you need to do here is just stay there for like five to six seconds. And if there is a carrier update for your carrier, it will pop up on the screen right here. And all you have to do then is just tap the install button and you're good to go. It will be installed within seconds. It doesn't need to reboot your device or anything like that. It's just a simple fast process. So make sure to do that and have the latest carrier updates for your iPhone with the new iOS 26.2. Another very important thing to do is make sure that you have your apps updated. Now you will see that a ton of apps, especially the popular apps, the ones that we use the most on a daily basis, will have a lot of new updates whenever a big iOS update is out. That's why you must update your apps because then you know that your apps are properly updated with their latest version and of course will be more compatible and will work as they should with the new software release. So head on to the App Store, go to your account right here, and under updates right here, make sure that you have all of your apps up to date and you're good to go. Now, if you don't wanna bother with doing that manually, you can always, of course, turn on auto updates and you can do that from the settings. So right here under apps, find App Store, and then right there you will have the automatic download section turn on app updates and you're good to go. Now another thing that I suggest you always do after every update 
of your device is check the battery health on your iPhone. And this is actually very important. So let's just go here to the battery health and I will show you guys why. So you can see right here, my device is currently at 88% battery health. Now, whenever you update your device, and you probably have seen this on the internet, maybe it has happened to you, a lot of people complain that they have updated their device, and once they updated, the battery's health maximum capacity has dropped by two or three or maybe even four or five percent. Well, a lot of people will blame that on the update and that's not the case. So basically what's happening here is that your iPhone is not properly showing the battery health of your iPhone. But when you do update your iPhone, it will actually, the iPhone will recheck all its components and then of course will calibrate them and all that stuff. And then it will show you the real battery health. So in this case, I have it at 88. It might be at 86 or 85, but it's not showing. And then when I update my device, it shows the real battery health and it drops by two or 3%. Now, why I say you should check this is that if you have a battery that it's close to 80%. It might be even under 80% and it will drop there once you have updated your device. And then of course you will need to replace your battery. So always make sure that your battery's health is above 80% and your device is of course performing as it should. And now that you have updated your iPhone to the new iOS 26.2, another thing that I think is very important to do is go ahead and give a quick check to the privacy settings of your device, which are really important. So head on under privacy and security right here. We have a lot of very important things to check. First of all, of course, you will have the location services. You go here. If you have location services turned on, you will have all of the apps that do have access to your location. Make sure you check those and don't have there any app that shouldn't be there or maybe limit the location for some apps just while you're using them or turn off precise location. And then you will also have some really important stuff right here. Like you will have your media, you will have your photos right here, of course, your wallet, you will have your Bluetooth, the camera of your iPhone, the microphone of your iPhone, and all these really important things that are really important, of course, for the security and privacy of your device. So make sure you go to things like that, like camera, microphone, Bluetooth, and all that stuff. Check them and see if there's any app that you don't want to be on that list. Of course, in that case, you can go ahead and turn them off. So of course, it's not a thing that should just be done after an update. But of course, now that you take some time to update your device, you might as well take some time to check the privacy settings of your device. Another thing you want to do is go to tracking and see right here if you have any apps that you have allowed to track you and you didn't want to do that. So, you know, when you install a new app, you will have, of course, a ton of pop-ups. You might just tap something just to get into the app and by accident allow an app to actually track you. You don't want that to happen, so go ahead and check the list right there and make sure everything is configured as it should be. So that's basically for this video, guys. These are a few different things that I believe are very important and every iPhone user must do whenever they update your device. And in this case, we're talking about iOS 26.2. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, smash that like button and of course, subscribe for more videos. We will be posting a ton of videos on the new iOS 26.2, some really interesting and useful videos. So make sure you subscribe for that and I'll see you guys on the next one.